Is your name written in the book of life? It doesn't matter what any religion says. It doesn't matter if you're Catholic or Baptist or Mormon or Jehovah Witness. It does not matter what you are, what religion or what sect you are. The question is, the Bible teaches that on the day of judgment, the books will be open, Revelation 20, and the book of life will be open. And if your name is written in the book of life, you will enter and be blessed in the kingdom of God. But if your name is not found in the book of life, then you will suffer destruction, eternal destruction in the lake of fire. This is what the Bible teaches in Revelation 20. So how do we get our name in the book of life so that we don't end up in the lake of fire? This book found in Revelation 20, we can trace it all the way back to the book of Exodus where Moses was interceding for Israel because they had sinned against God. And because they had sinned against God, uh, Moses was very concerned because he had knowledge that God had a book and he would write names on them. Notice this. Moses got this revelation way before the book of Revelation. Exodus 32, 32. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. So Moses knew that God had written a book, which in Revelation is called the book of life. And God wrote it, and he puts names in there. And watch this. God does not deny it. He says in 33, And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. So God does recognize what Moses was saying. And he said, Yes, I do have a book, but I'm only going to blot out those who sin against me. So this is the start of the book of life and what we need to do to have our name written in it. And the first thing that God says is, whoever sins against me, I will blot out their, their name. So in the book of life, you can have your name written and it can be blotted out or it can be written in. This is just the, the Bible facts, theological teaching. And it's important to notice this. Those who have sinned against the Lord, God will blot their names out. We see it again in Deuteronomy 9, 13, and 14. Again, uh, Moses is really trying to help the children of Israel. But let's look at this. It says, Further, Furthermore, the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven. And I will make of thee a nation mightier and greater than they. Two points we have to make here. First of all, that we had said before that to have your name blotted out of the book of life, you have to sin against the Lord. But not just sin, because God is merciful and He forgives sin. All through the Bible, God is a merciful God and His mercy endureth forever. But look what He said there in Deuteronomy. Behold, it is a stiff neck people. In other words, people that do not want to repent or they repent and then they continue doing the same sins that they repented of. Stiff neck means they are hard headed. They don't want to listen to God at all. They want to do their own thing and God will not have it. If God is calling you today to serve Him and you refuse and refuse and refuse after He calls you and calls you, you're stiff necked then God will blot your name out of the book of life. And notice how, again, Moses was there to intercede because God said, I'll destroy these people, the Israelites. I'll destroy them because they're stiff-necked. They don't want to listen. I, I, I forgive them and forgive them and forgive them, but they're still very stiff-necked. So he told Moses, I will make of thee a nation mightier and greater than they. But Moses would not have it. Moses interceded for the people of God. And of course, Moses was speaking through the Spirit of God, which God gave him so that he could intercede, intercede for Israel. So God was pretty much aware that, of what he was doing, but he wanted Moses to come and intercede for them. There are several places where it mentions the blotting out of the name from under heaven or, or from the book. 
But I skipped most of these to go to Revelation 3, 5. Listen to this. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. It to him that overcometh. So not only are you supposed to not sin against the Lord uh, and not be stiff necked and, and not want to repent, continue being stubborn and doing your own thing even when God calls you and calls you, but you also need to be an overcomer. An overcomer is one that does God's perfect will on earth. And because you do God's perfect will on earth, God will maintain your name written in the book of life. Now let's go to who is an overcomer. Let's explain this so that you might know and not trust religion, not trust your organization, but trust God and His Word. Listen to these verses, Revelation 21, 27. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So even playing around with God's word can get you in trouble. So we have to fear God and know what does it take for us to have our name written in heaven. And we already found out that we cannot sin against God. We cannot be stiff-necked and not want to repent. And then also we have to be an overcomer. An overcomer is one that does God's will and doesn't sin against God. And then very important thing is we follow Jesus and follow His Word. Here is another verse that gives us more light into what it takes to not get your name blotted out. Revelation 21, 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth. We need to know what that is to defile. And then neither whatsoever worketh abomination. We need to know what it is to work abomination. Or make a lie. Maketh a lie. We need to understand that no liars are going to enter heaven. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So this is narrowing it down from not sinning against the Lord. Not being stiff-necked. Being an overcomer. And now here it says, not defiling, not committing abominations, and not lying. Why is it important to have our name written in the book of life? Revelation 20, 15 settles the, the issue. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is scary stuff. God is warning us. That if your name is not written in the book of life, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire. So do we need to know how to get our names in the book of life? Of course, it is important. Does it matter what a Catholic religion says, or Baptists, or Mormons, or Jehovah's Witnesses, or whatever religion? Does it matter what they say when the Bible is telling us that if your name is not written, you'll be cast in the lake of fire? That's what's important. How do I get my name written in the book of life? And how do I maintain it there and not sin against God so He blots it out? This is a, the, the crucial question that we have to answer. Repent. Confess your sins to God. Acts 3.19 Believe that Christ died for your sins, death, burial, resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15.3 Be baptized in water. On a church that is Bible based. Mark 16 16, 1 Corinthians 12 13. Receive the promise of the Holy Spirit through the laying on of hands. Acts 1 4, Acts 2 39. Live a life of obedience and holiness. 2 Corinthians 10 5, Hebrews 12 14.